Silicon Labs announced Z-Wave Plus 800 series chips in 2021, and they are finally starting to show up. From new smart home hubs like the Hubitat C8 to the new Innovelli Red Series dimmers, 800 series chips will soon be out everywhere. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at the Zoo's 800 series Z-Wave long range GPIO module. We will also be going over how to install and set up within Home Assistant, including the Home Assistant Yellow. If you aren't sure about if you need to upgrade to Series 800, here's a quick comparison between 500, 700, and 800 series. The biggest advantage of the 800 series is the increased range and battery life. With Z-Wave 500, range capabilities are rated at roughly 0.4 of a mile, while 700 series is rated at 1 mile, and Z-Wave 800 series being rated at 1.5 miles. Keep in mind that these distances are determined in ideal testing environments. Actual distance achieved will be lower depending on the environment. Z-Wave 800 also has increased efficiency for send and receive current, which translate into longer battery life. The Zoo's 800 series Z-Wave Long Range GPIO module, or ZAC 93 LR for short, has a 4 expert users label. This means that while you will have hardware support, Zoos will not be able to provide much help with setup. While this might be a bit intimidating at first, the installation of setup with Home Assistant Yellow isn't that difficult. When opening up the ZAC 93 LR, you'll find the module itself in the typical Zoo's instruction manual. One thing that I was glad to find out is that the module already has a GPIO header on it, so you don't need to worry about buying any yourself. To get started, we need to first shut down Home Assistant. To do this, navigate to settings on the left hand side of the screen, and then click on System. Next, click on the power icon at the top right hand side of the screen, select Advanced Options, and then click on Shut Down System. Home Assistant will then take a few moments to properly shut down. If you have a Home Assistant Yellow, the green and amber lights will stop blinking, leaving you with a solid red light to let you know it's shut down. With Home Assistant powered down and removed from power, remove the case of the device. For Home Assistant Yellow, unscrew the four thumb screws from the bottom of the device. Flipping the case back over, you can remove the top part of the case. The GPIO location is at the bottom left hand side of the board across from the M2 expansion slot and under the onboard coin battery. Simply slide the module onto the GPIO pins. The module only has one orientation, which is pretty self-explanatory. A quick tech tip. If you plan on installing an M2 device in the expansion slot, you're better off installing it before the Z-Wave module. You can easily remove the Z-Wave module to install an M2 device, but better to just save the hassle if possible. With the module installed, place the top part of the case back on and flip the Home Assistant yellow over and insert the four thumb screws. Make sure not to over tighten these screws. If installing on a Raspberry Pi, the module needs to be installed on pins one through 10. And take note that these pins are reserved for Bluetooth functionality. Because of this, you'll need to disable Bluetooth before installing, which is outside the scope of this video. Next, plug in power and ethernet to your Home Assistant device and log into it once it's fully booted. We will now use the My button to add the Z-Wave configuration in. You should either be redirected to your Home Assistant asking if you want to add Z-Wave or you may first get prompted to input your Home Assistant URL. For me, I need to put in the IP address of my Home Assistant Yellow and save. Clicking on OK on the question prompt will start the configuration wizard for Z-Wave. You'll then be prompted to select the connection method. To use the official Z-Wave JS add-on, leave, use the Z-Wave JS supervisor add-on selected and click on submit. Installation of everything will then continue. Installation will take several minutes. Next, we will need to select the device path for our Z-Wave module. When using the GPIO pins, we'll need to select TTY AMA0. If you are migrating or restoring after a factory reset and happen to have saved your security keys, you can also enter them here. Otherwise, leave these fields blank to have them generated. Click on Submit once you're ready to move on. Doing so will finish the configuration of the Z-Wave JS add-on and start it, which will again take a bit of time. Once everything is done being set up, you'll be presented with a success pop-up that will give you the option to set the area for the Z-Wave module. With everything set up, you can find the main settings for Z-Wave under Integrations. Clicking on Configure for the add-on will give you basic information such as driver and server version, as well as controller statistics. You can also find logs here as well. To exclude a Z-Wave device in Home Assistant, Click on Remove Device from the main Z-Wave configuration page and click on Start Exclusion on the new pop-up. Doing so will put the controller in exclusion mode. 
where you can then trigger a Z-Wave device to be excluded. This process is typically used when removing a device from the hub, but is also sometimes needed to pair a new device as well. Once a device is excluded, the hub automatically exits exclusion mode. Keep in mind that if a different Z-Wave device is triggered before the device you are trying to exclude is triggered, then that device will be excluded instead and have to be re-added. Because of this, it's best to make sure no one else is using a Z-Wave device when you plan on doing a device exclusion. There are a few different ways to add a Z-Wave device to Home Assistant. You can click on the blue Add Device button from here. You can also click on the blue Add Device button under the Devices tab. Or you can click on the blue Add Integration button on the main Integrations tab. Clicking on the blue button under the Integrations or Devices tab will give you a pop-up window where you will need to select Add Z-Wave Device. Selecting any of the three options will give you a prompt saying to either trigger pairing mode on your Z-Wave device or scan the QR code of the device if it supports Smart Start. Every device has a different pairing mode, so you will need to look at the instructions for that particular device to set it into pairing mode. For this video, I'm going to be pairing a Zoo's contact sensor. Depending on the device, you may be required to enter in a PIN found on the device for secure pairing. This device will then be interviewed by Home Assistant to determine protocol information, node information, and a few other details about it. Depending on the connectivity between Home Assistant and the device, the interview process can take some time, and may even need several callbacks and technical exams. Once the device is paired, you can view the device by clicking on View Device on the interview pop-up. Here you'll see sensors for the device, device information, you can also rename the device, or assign it to a Home Assistant area. Let's now take a look at a few different things on this page. Configure provides a way to look up and update configuration parameters for the device. For example, with this contact sensor, I can control the LED indicator, change battery reporting thresholds, change the sensor behavior, and change Z-Wave group behavior. Clicking the three-dot menu next to Configure will give you more options. Re-interview forces the device to go through the interview process again, so that all of its abilities can be discovered. This is helpful if you think the device isn't showing all the expected entities, or that it may be lied on its resume. Heal triggers the device to rediscover the best route back to the controller. This can be helpful if you think you are experiencing delays or wireless issues with the device. Take note that your device may be less responsive during this process. Remove failed will force the controller to remove the device. This can be used when a device has failed or is broken and you can't go through the normal exclusion process. Statistics provides statistics about communication between this device and the controller allowing you to troubleshoot RF issues with the device. Update can be used to upload a firmware file to use for updating the device's firmware. Keep in mind that this is only supported by some devices and can break the device if done improperly. And lastly, Download Diagnostics will export a JSON file describing the entities for that specific device. Something I like is that as the devices are added over Z-Wave, they will begin to show up on your Home Assistant dashboard as well. I'd love to hear about what you find the most challenging about Home Assistant or home automation in general. So let me know in the comments below. If I have any ideas on how to fix them, I'll be sure to share them. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up as it signals to YouTube that it should be shared with others. And if you aren't already, consider subscribing to the channel and enabling notifications when you're the first to know when I release other home automation videos just like this one. If you'd like some smart home automation ideas, make sure to check out my video right here. In this video, I cover an automation that can help you save time and make life a little bit easier with the help of home automation. Thank you for watching and happy automating.